years ago, African honeybees were imported to Brazil. They bred with the local species, producing a new, aggressive, and dangerous strain that, without provocation, attacked and killed countless animals and scores of humans. These bees spread uncontrollably throughout the country. Each year, the area infested by the killer bees grows larger and larger. At this moment, South America has been completely invaded. So far, there are no means to prevent these deadly insects from taking over the entire Western Hemisphere. Papa, I'm afraid to go in there. Afraid? Nothing to be afraid of. We use plenty of smoke. Bees go to sleep. Honey, plenty of honey in there. When a man has only one son and four daughters, he has to gather plenty of honey for the market. Come on. There must be 20 or 30 pounds in each box. And I heard in the village that the Americans keep the best hives in their cage. Smoke them! Smoke them! Smoke them! More smoke! I got them! When are you coming to bed? What's the matter? Can't you sleep? Well, sleeping isn't what I had in mind. My darling, you work too hard. Dr. Miller! Yes, what is it? God and bees are going crazy. Somebody out there fooling with them. Let's go see. Franklin? No. You veil. Mm -hmm. Let's go.
somebody tried to rob the honey. God damn it. Instead of raiding the domestic hives, they had to meddle with these killer bees. I hope they got good legs for running. Not me! <laughs> Time I see. What's this? Looks delicious. Hervasante again. What's the matter? Don't you like it? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> it's just that Rosa is trying to get me pregnant. <laughs> but this is mean to Dr. Miller. She eat plenty Hervasanta, have plenty babies. By the time we get around to that, Rosa, it'll be Mr. Miller who will need to eat the Hervasanta. <laughs> the last thing we need is to go around ingesting all the local native. Fertility drug. Was there much damage to the hives last night? No, the robbers didn't get far. I guess they weren't prepared for the kind of reception they got. Oh, the poor fools. We've got to have better security, men to patrol the grounds at night. Wasn't there money in the budget for that? There was, and it was approved. But like so many other things, it just never got transferred down here. It's something that's been going on for a long time. I just realized it last night when I went over the account books. Sandy, somebody in the agriculture department had been skimming off funds from our project and all the other ag projects in South America. It amounts to half a million dollars, all told. And now I think I know who's been doing it. Huh. Well, then you better do something about it. I will, now that I have the evidence. But first, what the hell? Mr. Miller! Many men coming outside! Lady Andrew! Men? Take a look. Franklin, don't go out there. You stay here, Sandy. Wait! What do you men want here? All right, all right, I understand. Now listen to me. I know you know like Devil B. But I did not bring devil bees. Devil bees already here. And next year, more. In two years, many, many more abeyas do diabo. Unless, unless I fix devil bee so she not stinks so bad. Then devil bee good bee make plenty honey. You get honey, sell in market, make plenty money. But I need time. Time to turn abejas do diabo into good bee. So go home now. Please, go, go home. Assassinos. The cedars. Oh, no. Rosa, rush to town and get the police. Go on, the policia. Devil be skilled, my son. You killed my son. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm sure that most of you heard about the unfortunate incident that occurred at our genetic research station in Brazil last month. The uh, scientist who was killed in that tragic accident was a close friend and colleague of Dr. Hummel here, who has spent his life in the study of bee communication. Now, there's no question that the African bee is dangerous, and that's all the more reason why we need international cooperation. It seems to me more proper to direct your request for funds to the organization of the American states. Would it not? Isn't it really your problem? As far as danger to livestock and people is concerned, yes. But as our report makes clear, if we can successfully develop a new hybrid form of this species, we can double the production of honey and other bee products. That would be very important for my country. And at the same time, this new hybrid bee would be less aggressive. Be aggressive in the modern world is necessary for us developing societies to eliminate the last vestiges of the colonialism. Uh, gentlemen, the issue here is a matter of economic benefit to all developing countries. More and more, honey is being substituted for sugar in various food products. Oh, momento, oh, momento. What is wrong with sugar? Sugar uses the labor of the people for their own economic good. What we need, and badly, is a secure place in which to conduct our experiments. We believe that within one year's time... <laughs> you say one year now, later you will ask for your own five-year plan. <laughs> Wait, under the proper conditions. <laughs> you are out of order. Would you punch six for me, please? What are you doing? 
Just relax. What? No! Dr. Norman, I presume? Mrs. Miller? Yes. Well, come in, please. Thank oh. you. Are you all right? Uh, you have a guest. I'm terribly sorry. What's well, all right. No, it's... no. Maybe if you could just find me a hotel, then I won't bother you. No, no, yes? this is uh, Alicia Encino. Encinas. Encinas. This is Mrs. Miller. How do you do? It's fine, thank you. Hey, let me take your coat off. I didn't even know it was raining outside. Oh. Are you sure you're all right? You've got quite a bruise there on your forehead. Alicia was uh, just leaving, really. <clears throat> uh, I'm terribly sorry for spoiling your evening. I really... Oh, listen, you better let me have a look at that. That could be more serious than you imagine. Uh, no, it's, you know, it's really... Oh, God. Hey, hold on to me. Hold on to me. Yeah, I, I just felt woozy. Sit down. Um, I just want to say I'm sorry about your husband. I, I know that the failure of the project wasn't his fault. I'll be right back. You know, it's really important to me that, I, that I'm able to help finish his work because I really want to show that he was on the right track. I understand. But, boy, I'm not any good at all this intrigue. Huh? I lost all of my things. No, no, I was so afraid to go back for my bags to... to I, I didn't want to become involved with the police. Well, that's understandable, but you got through customs all right. Oh, yeah. When they were hassling some... Ow! When they were hassling some poor fellow with a beard and jeans, and I just kind of slipped by looking very respectable. They don't look respectable now. Bella madre! Oh, she's not having a beast. Oh, no. Alicia? Hold it. What? Just don't move. Don't move. See? Ah. Uh, it's already lost its stinger. What does that mean? Well, it probably stung your friend. Well, will she be all right? She'll be dead in a couple of minutes. Oh, wait a minute, I mean my friend. Oh, oh, sure. No, she'll be fine. Only a couple have got out, and it's not enough to be dangerous. Certainly look like you know what you're doing with those things. I'm terrific with one at a time. It's when they come after you by the thousands that I get very nervous. Well, do we still have enough to form a colony? The queens and the drones are sealed up, and that's all that we need. Except we need a safe place to keep them. Well, your your uncle Ziggy's got that. And he'll be back soon. So look, stay here. Really, you've got to be tired. And and the tranquilizer I gave you has got to be taking effect. So I'll sleep on the couch. Oh, no. Really, I insist. Please. I'll be right out here if you need anything.
Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Did you sleep well? I slept wonderfully. Thank you very much. Good. Do you do all that uh, karate stuff? <laughs> I used to. I found it was a good hobby in New York. So I've noticed. Maybe you should teach me. Well, the first thing you'd have to learn is how to tie your belt. Well, it's not quite my size, if you've noticed. Do you mind? No. You put it around double. Oh, it's like a Chinese uh, cummerbund. It's yeah? Japanese. Really? Of course. Let's go through here like that. That's terrific. Hmm. You didn't make a bed. No. Shall I make it? Uh, sure, thank you. Would you like some breakfast? Oh, wonderful. Do you need some help? No, it's all prepared. Hmm. Someone's at your door. I'll take care of it. Hi, at home. Good. And where have you been? I was in the country. But I just realized. I had forgot Sandra was coming in yesterday. Mm -hmm. Have you heard from her? Well, actually, she's, uh... Oh, go see! Oh. Sandra. Oh. God sei Dank. You look wonderful. This is my niece, Sandra Miller. We've met. Yeah, so I see. Sandra, I'm glad you're here. Don't you think you should have waited a little longer? A decent period of mourning before you... Now, look here, old man. It wasn't like that. Not at all. Of course not. Uncle Ziggy, don't be silly. Hmm. Sigmund, how about some breakfast? You're probably hungry after chasing all those bees around the mountain. Oh, yes. Thank you. Smells like fresh coffee. Hmm. It is. Here, why don't you let me do this? Let me go ahead and sit down. Yeah. Let's give him in service. That is what got me some. Uncle Ziggy, would you like some salt in your coffee? Tell me, how are the bees? Okay, at least the queens, and that's all that matters. Any trouble with customs? No, but we were lucky that we didn't. I can't understand why we didn't get official permission to import the bees. <sighs> we'll be lucky if the Department of Agriculture doesn't ask any questions if we come up with some results later. If we went through official channels, it will be too late. John, some people from big business want to talk to us. Can you make a meeting tomorrow? Big business? Why? What do they want? But you think they want money, profits, honey producers, cosmetic manufacturers, and we need their money for our researches. Okay, if you say so. We must show them how dangerous these Adansone bees are. I can understand your uh, interest in our work from an economic point of view, but uh, it'll be quite a while before we can find out whether these African bees can be made less dangerous while not losing any of their beneficial qualities. Well, better a little more aggressive than lazy. That's the American tradition, after all. <laughs> but are you saying you want to use these killer bees now? Just to get more honey? My company is interested in the cosmetic value of the royal jelly which bees make. Now, these special bees make very special royal jelly, mustn't they? No, no, not at all. They are just matter. Dr. Norman, Dr. Hummel, we're businessmen, not scientists. Let me come to the point. We want you to collaborate with us. And I might say that we can be very generous. Mr. Winkler, Mr. Blankley, uh, Mr. Green? Greg, Irving Gray. <laughs> Irving, let's get this straight. You want to take these killer bees and actually release them in the United States? <laughs> no, no. Not released, exactly. We'll have them well under control. Impossible. You don't understand. The mellifera antisoni has caused the deaths of hundreds of people in Brazil alone. God knows how many people in Africa. Now, listen, Norman. If you don't cooperate with us, there are other ways to get insects into the country. Besides, I don't believe these scare stories. How do you know the bees are so dangerous, young lady? Because her husband was killed by them. Let's go, Sandra. Mr. Hummel. John, we must work fast. They bring these bees here just as we did. We must forget about breeding them. We must find a way to destroy them instead.
Ya go. Julio, Julio Cesar, I've got some news for you and some money. What kind of news? And how much? How would you like to spend your vacations in the United States? All expenses paid by my company. You better not be cheating me, ma'am. I'm not. It's for sure. Mexico City Control Tower to Flight 824. Permission granted for emergency landing. Use landing strip B to East Terminal. Ambulance and paramedic services ready for your passenger. Your attention, please. This is the captain, Captain Reveal. Mexican authorities are presently conducting a thorough investigation of the airplane. Please bear with this temporary inconvenience. We will be resuming our flight to New York City shortly. Thank you. Did you find out what gave the passenger? Yeah, sure. He was wearing this belt. Hey, Jack. Be careful. Oh, 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 oh. Stand back. Who is he? Who is he? according to the sun, so east or west, we can have what we want, then we just feed the information into the computer and we're geniuses. Oh, well, that's fabulous. Did you design all of this? Well, most of it, along with Ziggy's help. Hmm. We wanted to see uh, what the various kinds of conditioning would have on these. Well, I guess we can go now. You haven't heard the news this morning, have you, about the bees on the airliner? Bees on the airliner? No, what? What happened? A man was killed. I know him. He used to work for us in Brazil. Tried to smuggle a colony of Adamsoni into the United States. Oh, good God. Did any get loose? Only on the airliner. The plane almost crashed, had to land in Mexico City. Well, there you are. I mean, they're at it already, the greedy sons of bitches. I mean, we're gonna have to work even harder. Hey, you need your rest, too. I mean, your brain doesn't work efficiently if it's overtired. I'm all right. You know, I think I may have come on to something last night. The microwave radiation just may do it, after all. The trouble is, it was also just absolutely unpredictable. John, I mean, you're being careful <clears throat> with that radiation, aren't you? I mean, we wouldn't want you altering your chromosomes or altering your genes. No, these are uh, 
Polyfocus instruments, they're not like radar beams or microwave ovens. Don't worry. Why are you so interested in what's in my genes? Oh, well, personally, I'm not. It's just that you may want to use them sometime. You're right. More. It's fine. Yeah. Come back a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I couldn't work this without you. I'm only good, Uncle Ziggy, because I work cheap. You know, I work cheap. Bag. You 
think you can catch me some bees and put them in that? Well, you see, I got a little problem with my legs. It's called rheumatism. It hurts. It hurts all the time. Yeah, sir. Uh, you might not believe it. The bee stings makes it feel better. So what I want you to do is to take this paper bag and catch me four or five bees. Bring them to me. But don't let them sting you. They can only sting one time, then they die. OK, you got a deal, but shove over the bread first. OK. One buck now, and one buck when you bring me the bee. Good luck. Hey, what you guys doing? What's it to you? Catching bees for some old jerk. You're putting me on. What do you mean, catching bees? No shit, the old guy's paying us to catch him some bees. Yeah, how much is he paying? None of your goddamn business. Two bucks. Two bucks for bees? Well, do you have any luck, boys? Yes. Let's owe you another buck. Now we're going to see if this is going to work. You mean to tell me you're going to actually let them sting you? If they will, we'll see. Oh! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clouds of the so-called killer bees were seen over the San Diego Bay Area. It is incredible that in spite of having the most sophisticated weapons and advanced defense systems, the United States seems completely defenseless against this invasion. More news about the bees in just one minute. Sheba, a new discovery in natural beauty creams. The same formula used by the Queen of Sheba, which devastated the great King Solomon and made him her slave. What was her secret? Royal jelly. And now, the Procter & Bennett Company has rediscovered this long-lost miracle produced only by a rare species of African bee. That's like playing a cigarette commercial after a documentary on lung cancer. <laughs> Two farmers were killed today in Arizona, bringing the toll of deaths caused by the bees to a frightening total of 46 to date. Red tape. It takes weeks for the simplest request. Here we are, that far from the answer, and they're going to be spraying half the country with insecticides. Hundreds of square miles, poisoned. Made sterile for years to come. Uncle Ziggy, why, why can't we use that new Ferran? Tomorrow. It's not possible. We need witnesses, observers. It's got to be official or else it's useless. Well, it isn't for us. I mean, if we know for sure, and if you're convinced, I mean, you can persuade them to, to give us more time, couldn't you? Maybe. But I'd have to have a lot of hard facts and figures and under natural conditions, not just in the lab. And you will have to find us farm somewhere. Tomorrow would be a good day. I know they should look too, but you must be very careful. I'm ready. So am I. Dangerous. Well, of course, that's why you need me alone. It's amazing. Ziggy knew exactly where to look for those wild beehives. Give me the smoker.
Oh, is that that radar station you were talking about? Yeah. Radiation from that dish is so intense, there's no telling what it would do to you. I wonder what would happen to our ad and Sony if they got a good dose of that radiation. I don't know, Doctor. That's your department. Yeah. The lower one will be easier to experiment with. Let's be careful, huh? I'll smoke them and quiet them down a little bit. Well, they're adding Sony. Thanks to our greedy smuggling friends in business. Okay. Yeah. Well, here goes the Farron. Okay. Let's get out of here. I don't know what's happening, but something's going on here. I mean, Boy, they're confused. They are really confused, John. I think they're... They're, fight, they're attacking each other right here, look. They can't. What are you doing? Looking for something. Uh-huh. What? I found her. Be careful. Yeah. She's what? dead. Her own workers have killed her. Oh. Your uncle oh. Ziggy was right. Oh, John, it, it works. works. It works. It oh. works. Oh, it works. Oh. South Covina. And don't forget the theme of this year's Rose Parade. On the road to happiness. Beautiful. Just fantastic. 4,500 hand sewn azaleas. Boy, I'll tell you, that Millican High School marching band certainly has one of the very best baton twirlers. Life! It looks like bees! 
There's thousands of them. Take it easy, Sam. It wasn't the hives, it was that Dr. Morris, the one you picked to bring the frozen bee sperm from Brazil. He stole some, sold it to the competition, and let their bees escape. Now, the question is, what are we going to do about it? Well, it's my responsibility as an undersecretary of the Department of Agriculture to come up with some recommendation. Now, the only thing I can see to get out of this mess is to find a way to kill these bees, all of them. All of them. We just got the new project started. This year, we expect to show record profits. Now, look, look, I can't hedge on this one. I don't want an investigation started, and I'm sure you don't either. Now, I've decided I'm going to give all the funding to this Dr. Hummel. Give it to him slowly. I'm sure you realize that there's got more involved in here than profits. And I'm sure you know what I mean. So, as you may know, the queen bee leads her swarm from the hive in order to start a new colony somewhere else. Now, the drones, that is the fertile males, must mate with her on this so-called nuptial flight. They find her by scent. That is, the queen bee gives off a chemical odor, which the drones can detect for hundreds of yards. So what Dr. Hummel proposes is the synthetic manufacture of this chemical, which is known as a pheron, and can be sprayed into the atmosphere, and we believe cause the drones to become confused and attempt to mate with each other rather than with the queen bee. Gentlemen, Dr. Norman, I'm sold. You've made a brilliant presentation, and I feel that your solution will resolve all this problem. Well, uh, there are certain benefits. On balance, it's worth considering. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sondra, now you will see something frightening. The battle to the death between the new queens. The survival of the fittest, or rather, of the most brutal. A reflection of the human political process in a way. Uncle Ziggy, that really hardly seems democratic. By the way, do you still have all of Frank's notes? Yes, I've been typing them up for you. Oh. And I also have his account books, too. And Uncle Ziggy, I've been meaning to ask you, would you take a look at them with me? Franklin, just before he was killed, he, he was very upset about something he found out. Something about the money. Yeah. I'll have a look at them later. believe it. Well, try me. The agricultural department's going to fund us. They're going to give us everything we want. I've got it right here in black and white. Oh, no, they, no there's got to be a catch. Yeah, there's a catch. We can eliminate the killer bee without endangering any other species. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh good. Let's go tell Uncle Ziggy. We've got the deal. 
Siggy, we got the deal. We got the deal. They're going to fund us. They're going to give us everything we want. We can start work on your idea right now. Fund us! <laughs> I knew you could persuade them. What about your own progress? The microwave experiments? I've run into a dead end. So? Yeah, at least for the moment. Uh, well, I know that I can alter the genetic structure of the bees, and uh, I produce some pretty strange behavior, but I don't know what it means, and I haven't made them any less dangerous, that's for sure. What strange behavior? Well, they group together in the oddest configurations, like... This may sound like the strange shreds of an overworked mind. Like an electronic circuit. Like the wire printout of a computer. Hmm. Hmm. Did you record these sounds? Yes. That's good. Give me the shapes. I should like to hear them. What would you expect to find? Oh, I don't know, but I've been discovering that they communicate not only but movements, but with sounds as well. Sounds which the human ear cannot distinguish. Look, i show you. This is the dance, the language of the bees. The dance is used by the scout bees. She's telling him about 100 meters to the northwest, you see? Two rotations to the left, and the transit of 12 meters, and that pause there. So far, it is clear. But how do they know about the quantity and the quality? See, she's telling them it's pretty good, but there's not much of it. So, you see, only a few workers leave for that particular flower. It's amazing. How did you figure that out? The computer. I have a program now. It's very much like translating an unknown language. If you have enough inscriptions, you can discover the pattern. But can you talk back to them, too? Ah, I'm working on that. What kind of a bee is that? An artificial one. Sandra made it for me. It is controlled by a little wire under the entrance stage. See, now he's saying which way to go and how far. See, two turns to the left and back five centimeters. The workers understand that and off they go. Hmm. There's nothing artificial about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that guess is for me, not for you. After all, she is my niece. That's adding incest to injury. But it proves her good taste. If she had good taste, that kiss would have been for me. Well, that just shows I have good taste. Hazel, move over. Hey. Hey. Oh, you stupid thing. Hazel, <laughs> go back and home. Go home now. Go home, go to sleep. Go home. Uh, Rossman, go back. Go back. Yeah, come on. Ah, oh, you're a truant. Struble painter. Yeah. Ah, oh, Frank. Dr. Norman, very nice seeing you, my boy. See you again. I'm sorry. We couldn't make it any sooner. We got tied up in that damn oh, private. Don't worry about it. No problem. No problem. Oh, and I believe you know Mr. Winkler and uh, Mr. Blankley. Yes, hello. Yes, yeah, we've met. Uh, Dr. Norman, you gentlemen working with the administration now? Well, not exactly, but uh, industry has a great stake in this matter, you understand. Yes. Uh, Dr. Norman, usually it's not sound policy to take action on a... Uh, unproven theory such as yours without first doing extensive testing, as you well know. Yes, I know indeed. However, the president has asked that we try everything possible to be able to resolve this situation. There's been over 200 deaths, including many children and thousands of head of livestock. Look, Mr. Brennan, we are prepared to cover an entire infested area within one week. I mean, that's one of the advantages of this method as opposed to insecticides. One teaspoon of ferron can cover a thousand acres. Then if it uh, doesn't work, it doesn't cost us that much. But it will work, and furthermore, there'll be no damage to the environment at all. Oh, wonderful then, wonderful. Whenever you're ready, just start it. We're ready right now. 
Just let us know what you need. Okay. I can do it too. Dr. Moorhead, this is General Craddock. Dr. Morad has been appointed UN observer. As you know, General, this procedure requires surgical precision. I believe that serious circumstances require serious measures. Well, we're right on time. The weather's perfect. Let's hope they do it right. We'll isolate the areas where the climate is most consistently temperate or hot, as in the desert or in this region of the south. And we'll plan attack squads on a circular pattern surrounding the principal breeding areas, move in toward the center, try to stop the spread. What about the nearby towns? Will they be in any danger? We'll drop in supplies on an as-needed basis to those places that we can't evacuate. Fine, but what about the rest of the country? Well, the colder regions will inhibit the breeding. We don't expect any further spreading of colonies, and that'll give us sufficient time to plan our maneuvers in the areas most hard hit. I don't know, Dr. Norman, but I hope for all of us that you know what you're doing. I hope so, too. <laughs> Dr. Norman, the 17th Squadron is airborne. Operations will commence over the East Central sector at $1,200. Good. Did you hear that? Mark it. Uh, Norman here. Terrific. Okay, talk to you later. Northwest 27, secure. Northwest 27, check. South Central 12, secure. Norman here? Yeah. I hear you. Are you kidding? I think it's marvelous. It's finally working out. Dr. Norman, I never thought it would be quite that easy. I never had any doubts. <laughs> Missouri, Denver, Colorado, and New Orleans, Louisiana were finally declared killer bee-free areas as of today. Those were the last of the major cities afflicted by the invasion of the Apis mellifera at Ansoni. It has been an outstanding scientific triumph for the United States. Here it is, finally. It says they've covered all but the last three sections in Oregon, and I got a call from John, and he said it worked just as we'd hoped. Oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. This is very good. Oh, Sandra. I've been looking over these account books of Frank's, as you told me to. And he left some notes here, too. Do you know what he meant by them? I think so. Somebody has managed to rip off a lot of money between the Agriculture Department and South America. Small wonder Frank couldn't make any progress. Oh, Uncle Ziggy, if, if we could only prove that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But we must find out who is it. Maybe look at the canceled checks in the bank in Washington. 
Oh, it doesn't matter who. I mean, let the police find out. Yeah. I, it's enough for me if we could just vindicate Franklin. I'd like to show that we didn't have a chance in Brazil. Ah, yeah. I understand. You know, I have decided to accept that invitation to go to Washington next week, after all. I thought you didn't want any honors. Ah, uh, but I have other reasons. You know, as the nectar attracts the bees, mm -hmm. so the honors attracts the money. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ziggy, you're getting greedy. But it is a very good cause. <laughs> it's for you, sir. Hello. You've done an excellent job, Dr. Norman, and I sincerely appreciate it. And please extend my congratulations to Dr. Hummel. I surely will. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Good day, Mr. President. Do they do something? Oh, Uncle Ziggy, I have wonderful news. Eh? I just got a call from John. Well, don't you want to know what he has to say? Oh, yeah. What did he have to say? He says that there's been no sign of any more Anatsoni anywhere. Ah, good. And he says he's coming back tonight, and I'm going out to the airport to meet him. Oh, yeah? yeah. Yes, he's good. Well, we may be late, so don't wait up. Oh, yeah, 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 Sachin. Go ahead. I'll be all right. Leave her gut. Oh. What? Oh. Are you all right? Uncle Ziki, are you all right? Oh. Are you all right? Yeah, 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 I'm fine. Just for a minute, I thought these, there was something wrong with these printouts here. But <laughs> they're all right, they're all right. Oh, Uncle Ziggy, <laughs> I thought there was something wrong with you. Ah. <sighs> Oh, Uncle Zicky. Oh. You know, you've been so kind. I don't know what I would have done without you. No, nein, nein, Liebchen. It's, it's nix, it's nix. Oh, it's nix with you. It's no nix mit me. Dr. Hummel, on behalf of the people of the United States, and I'm pleased to say that we've been able to eliminate the Addis Amiferis Bolivity. Apis mellifera adansoni. Well, the killer bees. Thank you. Is it, is it true that there's no more threat to the United States? Absolutely no more threat we've been able this to This is Sherry Reddick, TV Witness News, Channel 34, Washington, D.C. Yes. Dr. Hummel, please. Yes. Dr. Hummel, is, is yes. it that, That's all there is, gentlemen. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for coming. Certainly appreciate it. Dr. Hummel, thank you very much, sir. Uh, excuse me, please. I must talk to you privately. Ah, certainly. Won't you step right over here? I brought you these. Some pages from the account books of Dr. Franklin Miller. But if you study his notes, you will see there was someone in your own department who was stealing funds from the project. Really? There is no question about it. Who else knows about this? Only my niece and Dr. Norman. Well, this is a very serious situation, and it could lead to danger then I can assure you that we will make an investigation to the end, no matter where it leads. Yeah, good. I'm glad to have been of service. Now I must return to my work. Well, I'm sure you have many more important things to do, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for coming. Appreciate it. Ah, Doctor, you're forgetting this. Oh, yeah. My niece will want to keep this. Fine. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Hello. This is one of your clients. I want to take out a contract with some of your people. I want the very best available. Is it clear? Yes. I'm going to call with the wall.
Bees are out of their hives. Well, at night? I mean, that's not normal. Something's wrong. Listen to me. Who did this to you, Ziggy? <laughs> it doesn't matter. They know. Who are they? The bees. They know everything. They are a new species. They are too smart for the pharaohs. It's all in the tape, Sandra. It's ironic. They can think like man. They can think, think like a man. But they need your help. You will not fail them? I won't fail them. <laughs> Where are you? I'll be it. Oh, John! Oh, how could he get? Oh, how could he get? Get down! <laughs> Oh, 
Good morning. What are you doing? Mr. Brennan, there's a bee in here, and I can't seem to get it out. Oh, possibly he likes your perfume. Oh, there it goes, finally. Just like it saw you and flew away. Well, are there any messages? On your desk. Is there anything else I can do for you? Not right now, dear. I have to make a private call, eh? Hello. This is your client. Why haven't I heard from you? Look, I have a contract. I want it to be taken care of immediately. After it was thought there were no more killer bees, Chicago, Houston, Detroit, San Francisco, and Philadelphia were declared disaster areas. This is the worst outburst of the plague. It seems to be completely out of control. Stay tuned to your emergency broadcasting station regarding security measures, and please keep your family and pets indoors at all times. Strongest concentrate we can prepare. Excuse me, Doctor. Can these blow up? No, they won't explode, but you must be very careful with the fumes. Keep your windows down. Okay, rush them off to the base.
hell is going on? I don't know, Doctor. Florida Central, get me Dr. Norman. Yes, this is John. I know what's happening. The ferron isn't working. There's got to be an explanation. There's been a mutation, a new strain, and... Well, it's out of control. You mean those bees have become immune to the ferron? I really don't know. Hummel is dead, and there doesn't seem to be anything we can do against them. Well, why the hell aren't you here? Because we're trying to decipher the language patterns of the bees. You're doing what? Are you mad? You mean you want us to conduct peace negotiations with bugs? Either that, or you can consider praying. You are a glutton. sudden change threaten the delicate balance of nature. Nature always attempted to correct this imbalance by evolving new and higher forms of life which could adapt to the new threatening circumstances. 
forms of life which could not adapt mercilessly were made extinct. Now, as never before in our long history, the Earth is being threatened by mankind, by ourselves, by our destruction of the environment and our pollution of the atmosphere. And so once again, nature is reacting. This time, attempting to defend itself against man's unrestrained tampering. And the chosen instrument of this defense is this new species of killer bee, created by some electronically stimulated genetic mutation. The late Dr. Hummel's research has given us ample evidence that this species has evolved beyond its ordinary, habitual, and instinctual concerns and patterns, and is capable of reasoning. Furthermore, this species has established meaningful and serious communication with my colleague, Mrs. Miller, and myself. Good Lord, this chap's gone completely raging bonkers. No, sir. They have communicated a warning that unless we stop abusing their environment, that they will eliminate mankind from it completely. Thank you, Dr. Norman. That was a most interesting presentation. The committee will consider it for its next agenda. There's nothing to consider. This is an ultimatum. Either we share this world with them on their terms, or we vanish as a species. Please, Doctor, we've invited you here as a courtesy to the memory of the late Dr. Hummel. But now we have important business. Would you mind? You're not listening to me. Would you kindly listen to me and try to understand what I'm telling you? And please believe me. You have to listen. You have to listen what the bees have to say. Sorry, Doctor. We have to have you removed from this room. Please, don't give any difficulties. Don't make any trouble. You don't know what trouble is yet. You fools, you idiots. Now you leave them no choice! Approximately 20 trillion of these bees in existence. And they're multiplying at a rate of 5 billion a day. From now on, they will dominate the Earth equally with mankind. Or without mankind, depending on whether or not we accept their terms. I know you will accept. There's no other way to survive.